whenever you start out, you 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 feel almost like like isolated. It's like, oh, well, I want to be like this, but I'm not. And like, you think that if you buy the right gear and you do buy all these courses and you do all these things, that you'll that you'll somehow be better. And so much of artistry, regardless of photos or not, like is just truly practice. Mm. So we're live. Um, okay. Nate Crawford, welcome to the show. It's such an honor. You, I'm excited to be before here. Before you like, got here, you're like, this is my first in person. Because you have done many interviews. Yes. <laughs> Which is a shock. I'm like, why? But I don't know. It's just fun. I like to talk. And Do you, you think know? you'll ever say no to one? Um, Cause pr- you, you, how often do you wait? Do you, or do you wait a certain period of time between each one? It kind of depends. Um, I would say it really, hmm. most of the time it's like friends or colleagues oh. like, or folks who are like, hey, I like all your work. Let's, you know, like interview and discuss this. Sure, that's fine. I don't know. I like talking. I like sharing things. Do you feel things. like you're repeating yourself? Um, a lot of the time for sure. But I mean, yeah. I think that's just more of like the who, what, where, where, and why. Sure. Um, I love podcasts and like interviews that like ask you like deep things or like, yes. you know, you know, explain <laughs> and more like explain like your process and like where that inspiration comes from and all that stuff. Like I just, I don't know. I just like talking. <laughs> I just like, sure. You know, and like he- hearing other viewpoints. I love that too. Cause I think within the art, within this space, it's so easy to be like in your head all the time. And so it's nice to hear others, you know, you know, styles and people and like, I don't know. I love it. Absolutely. Um, to, to kind of just set the tone, um, before we came on and I knew this, but you, you just closed that you, you stutter. Yes. And, but like you're graceful, you're doing like, you're killing it at life. (laughs) So as growing up, your upbringing, like what, what were some challenges that you had to navigate with that stutter? Mm -hmm. And then we'll talk about maybe like your thought processes behind, what you thought you could or could not do mm-hmm. as a career with that stutter. Cause we, b- before we started recording, we talked about hospitality and we know someone else that does it and how challenging that is. So mm-hmm. describe your upbringing if you can. Yeah, absolutely. You know, my, so I started stuttering when I, when I was around like five years old. Okay. So, and most of the time it's usually kids, right? And, and it's younger. So you're learning language, you're learning to like speak, understand the w- world or, around you your brain is developing so fast you know yeah. and so you know for most kids um they'll stutter and then stop or like oh they, i didn't they, know that they, 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 they'll like ease out of it right okay um, before before adults um but there's a probably around a one percent of all adults who 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 have it throughout their whole lives okay and it's fascinating because like speech in itself is a complex thing it's not just like one one asset right and so it's like it's understanding you know that like it's understanding your body the brain and then like language as a whole right and so and so there's variety of of like i guess just p like pieces of this very large speech right you know so um yeah you know for me i think my journey with stuttering has evolved over time um where i'm at now with it and how i sort of view it and understand it has has changed from when, when I was five years old, right? Okay. You know, so born, raised, small, small, small farm town, and no one stutters, right? You know, and so like you are the only kid who has this. You know, the parents are trying to understand it. They're trying to help. Um, they're trying to say all the right things and fi- find all the right folks to like help with this, right? Because they're like, like our child has this ability that like I don't understand. And I think it, you know, it took a variety of like speech therapies and like variety of like teachings and tools and com- and just like um, groups and just like so much, so many man hours and like variety of th- therapies to like get to uh, to where I'm at now, right? Yeah. And along the way, I I feel like it's it's something where if you're in a wheelchair you're able to see that beforehand before before even saying anything you know that they are just able to to like some like degree right gotcha. but with speech it's you you don't learn until like 
like you speak out loud and there's like oh there may be something you know there's yeah. and like but there's varying degrees of stuttering and how and how it sort of happens and why why it occurs um and the science behind it is actually really interesting because we're sort of learning about it as we go because because like it's so much involved with like the brain and like um, there's folks who like believe it's about like the genes. There's others. It's about env- 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 environments. It's about mm. a, and so I think it's a lot of variety of things that like cause it, make it worse. You know, less bad. You know, you know what ha- what have you. And so it it is sort of this like <laughs> trying to understand it while also having to live life. You know what I mean? Yeah. And like me, you know. That there's so, so there's so many folks I know who, uh, who that are who had like ho- like very challenging childhoods and like schooling and like you know like I had a not 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 really a friend but more more of like a colleague who would like he he, he had to, to learn like karate in order to, to like to like to like defend himself from Aww. the kids at school and like me i was the polar opposite in school my classmates were very nice to me mm. my schooling was very like pretty chill i would say in terms of like no one really really ever said anything and if they did it was more like one off little you know what have you um but honestly i think throughout throughout my whole life it's been pretty posit- like pretty fine and like m- most folks just don't really care i guess in a really r- 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 odd sense and so i think for me it was more of like my own internal sort of dialogue and the understand standing of this throughout, you know, teenage years to now being an adult for sure. Did you, how, how did you navigate thinking about potential careers f- through that, mm-hmm. through that lens? Yeah. You know, see, I, <laughs> I, cause you started in hospital. Did you start in hospitality? I right? did. I, I heard about something about hotels. <laughs> yes. Yes. And so, you know, the, even though I I still love speaking. I still love communicating and chatting and like small talk and like, you know, being able to serve others and help others like that, you know, and so hospitality for me was a way to sort of do that. Right. And like hilariously enough. So when I was very young, my, my like first dream job was like be being a sports announcer. (gasps) And so I, and so like inner so, so nearish our town probably like a half hour away was like the sports broadcast casting camp and i was probably like maybe 11 or 12 like young but not you know so young and i went and like it was very obvious from like the first day that i was like oh i'm not gonna be good at this and not because my speech because the knowledge the these very young kids had of like of this player played of this time and their average is this and this and like all mm. this data about these people. I'm like, I like the red team. They're fun. <laughs> you know, like that's cool. <laughs> and so I think I just, I, I enjoyed more of like the theater behind it than like the actual like knowledge to base. Think about that at 12. Good for oh, you. Oh yeah. yeah. And so, Good you know, you. yeah. And so, I mean, through, throughout high school, I did um, shows and musicals and like love that process. And like, there's something fun about being on, a, being on a stage and like, sharing a line or you know dancing it's just fun um and so yeah so just throughout my life i just sort of have always enjoyed those being able to like do things that i want to do and not feel like i have to be like like oh well i have this i can't you know i've never you never, you never had the victim mentality well always after the facts so i would <laughs> so i would be uh, i'll be like oh well, i want to do the show i want to be a lead i would try out get the lead role and be like, Oh no, I have to now learn, learn all these lines and like say all them fluently. But, and so it was more of like, like, like post the facts saying, okay, well I still want to do this. I need to sort of really work hard and like, you know, practice and all that stuff. So Mm -hmm. are there certain situations where the stutter comes out a little more often than usual or or is it 100 percent uncontrollable it really depends i would say uh and it's not the same for everybody right yeah, uh, yeah. for other folks there's a variety of other sort of quirks and ticks that like occur right um but for me anything on the, like as a whole there's an idea that if you're nervous or anxious then that's that's the cause 
and that's not the case, right? You know, like everyone is nervous and anxious, right? But varying degrees of being anxious, nervous, what have you, can, can make it worse, right? And it's harder to be fluent when you have to, th when like, like it's being f f fluent plus, plus anxiety, plus, you know, right. you know, all these nerves, right? And so right, I think, right. um, you know, for me, it's sort of always been that journey of like, okay, how do I sort of live my life, but yet also st still have this like, this disability and like use it in a way, a way that, that helps me. Right. Yeah. And so, it's just, you know, and so, uh, and so after school, um, college, I wanted to do ho like the, hosp the, hosp the hospitality industry. You know, I love food, love the service base industry. I think there's so much, so much good that can, can come from, from like being able to serve others and help others. Oh, yes. Um, but also provide provide like an experience that's like unique and fun, right? And so, yeah. So I went I went I went to school f f for hotel management and like oh. really enjoyed that. Um, and I wanted to work within the advertising space space within the hotel industry. Um, and so yeah, I, you know, and so within those industries, you have to speak all the time. Yeah. And it's more how, how I sort of approach it is like it's like improv, right? And so you, it's like it's mm -hmm. more of you kind of have to just be on, on your toes and think through, through things and plan things. But there's moments where you'll have to say, say things unplanned. And then it's like, like okay, well, how am I going to like speak in a way that's impactful, that, that gets the point across without trying to be, you know, this whole thing? I don't know. So. Yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, so then... Would you consider yourself an extrovert or an introvert? Because, like, I, I imagine maybe people um, that are a little more introverted might have a hard time, maybe putting the reps in and, and putting themselves out there to 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 speak. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I would say that I'm an like I'm an extrovert trapped in an introvert's body, <laughs> uh, where my de default is being alone, like like the okay. introverted staying at home. I love being at home. <laughs> I love yeah. you know being in studio alone is a great vibe, um, but I also still enjoy the extroverted aspects of me, and so I feel like within my job and my life, like those two blendings help me, you know, sure. in v v v v v various areas, right? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. time and place for everything, right? Oh, for sure. Mm -hmm. um, is there anything that you would add or subtract to whatever you, whatever therapy you had back when you were five? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, so so where I'm from, um, but I'm, like, I'm from a small f f f farm town near um, Shan Champaign, Illinois. So oh, like, yeah. so like three hours south. Did, of you here, right? you, did you just drive from there? No. Okay. I'm, no, no, no. My goodness. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Um, no. So I've been up here in Chicago, Chicago, go, go land for like four, four or five years oh, now. Okay, okay. So yeah. Mm -hmm. No, but you know, so like being, being in a very small school, small farm town, the therapist, they had, they had, uh, they had like at the school, like I like outgrew very fast because it was just like, oh, there's mm. more, there's more underlying like issues in like therapy that I have to have in order to be fluent, right? And so the U of I there, the school, they're like number two or three in the world for like speech and language. So they have like some doctors there that like are world, world renowned and like, you know, therapies that like are, you know, whatever. And so we so I was brought there to like see some folks and get some testings and like try and understand this and like I think you know like as I think back I think what what one of the, I think the best and the worst things I was told was that like if here's the bar like of like a normal a normal person you are right here mm. which as a kid I always felt inspired by that as an adult, I've sort of learned that that was actually really horrible to say to, to a child who is disabled. I think that's, you know, to say that you're just almost there, you're almost normal, like, it's kind of cruel in a sense, right? You personally were, was inspired, but most people would be discouraged by that? I think when I was younger, I was inspired by that. I was like, oh, I'm so close, I can just make that. But as an adult now who sort of realizes that, like, okay, this isn't going away anytime soon, that was kind of a cruel thing to put on a child and say that mm. you're almost able body. Like, 
uh, you're almost able to be normal. Mm. And this idea that like we put being normal to a disability is cruel, I think, in a sense. Mm -hmm. um, and so mm -hmm. I think that that while, while I thought as a child that that helped me, it actually I think I think it hurt me long term because because then I strive to be perfect. I strive to like speak in a way that that was like perfect mm. and language and how, how we speak like every day is not perfect, mm -mm. you know? And so this idea of like trying to be perfect was, it haunted me for a long time. And I think now in like the last like three or four years, I've sort of like begun to unpack that and say, okay, why am I feeling this way? Where does this come from? And then sort of be healthy about it. Okay. Mm hmm that's great. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> hope that helps a few people out there. I hope so, for sure. Mm -hmm. um, so fast forward to now, I feel like life for you is just moving at a million miles per hour. <laughs> yes. You just did a big move. I did, yeah. Did you move out of Chicago or somewhere around like Chicago? Mm -hmm. It's like you're staying in the area. Yeah, so I'm in Desplaines right now. Oh, oh okay, um, okay. And so um, I was there, and we did just move to apartments there oh okay okay i'm um, so same co co complex but just gotcha, moved. Gotcha. yeah so went from one bed to two to two bed bedroom we have a studio space now it's fantastic is the studio space separate from your personal kitchen yes it is yes it's delightful oh. it's so nice finally <laughs> oh finally yes 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 i i did some scrolling scroll earlier today uh, -huh. uh and i remember when you first started you were at your parents home on the floor oh my <laughs> yes. Oh, uh, yes. Humble beginnings. Humble, Humble beginnings. beginnings. Uh -huh. And uh, and your first kind of foot in the door, like segue into food, was what messing up a casserole. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so, but before that moment, you never thought you'd be into cooking and baking, and let alone photography, but like just the food aspect of it. Oh, not at all. No, no, no. You know, so so my, my you know, so I come from a long line of like bakers and home cooks who were amazing okay. like 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 r r r recipes that we make still you know just like really t talented uh their neighbors and friends would i would ask them for like you know you know the mother's cake mother's pie you know and so food and like like for us like us has always been very communal or yes for sure right? okay mm -hmm, for okay, sure okay. you know and so you know until i was 18 um Right, right out of high school, just like you know, probably like a month out, and um, so I was in between jobs, and um, and so I was home all the time, and and so I was like probably like a two week gap between job one ending and job and job two starting up. So I was like, okay, I'm home all the time. My family is like at their jobs, what have you, and so my mom's like, okay, well you're here all the time. Why don't you make us food in the evening so that I don't have to? I'm like, I can try. I mean, I. <laughs> I've helped before cook, but like okay. I don't really know, know how to, and so um, it was like a taste of home, like casserole, and I made it. I was like not really proud, just like cool. I made this awesome, and we're eating as a family, and it's so dry, <laughs> like just <laughs> incredible. Like describing it to you, like 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 it's like eating cardboard. <laughs> it was horrendous, and and so my mom's like, okay. <laughs> And so she got up and made a, and made like a gravy from scratch, mm. and we poured it on the, um, the dish, and it was like, oh, this is much better, and it was that moment I think of like, oh, we're able to fix this. We're able to take one food and put it on a whole other food. That and could make have gone a different direction. Yes. That could have told. Yeah. How, however, like, what if your parents were like, this is trash? They, <laughs> you know, I've been very blessed because they're very supportive and like they like even when i failed at you know food items and i have before you, they've always been like very supportive and like helpful and nice because i've also made some excellent food right and so right. and so and so it's like you know it's fun uh, but that was really i think the first instance of like of the power of food and like how it's like oh like that's like so fascinating of how of how like a gravy like on a, ca a casserole is able to like make it delicious how fascinating and so like that was really really where like my love of co cooking and food really began and like you know th it was sort of a slow love and then like like all at once and it, i just fell into it what did you end up doing did you start collecting or looking up recipes or cookbooks and like how mm -hmm. did you gain a, an appreciation and a love for 
making something out of nothing, you know, like food mm-hmm. or, or cooking and baking. Yeah, you know, um, as anyone does, 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 I went on the internet, um, you know, joined, joined Pinterest and like mm. got like very inspired, not only by like, by like, by like the food, but also the images on there. Like of the food, I'm like, oh, that's oh. fun. And so I think slowly over time, I was like, okay, I really enjoy how this food looks within this story they're trying to tell. Mm. And so then, like a year out after that, like I, w- like I was starting to cook, cook more and learn and like you know fails, what have you. And I wanted a way of sharing all the food that that like I made with friends and family mm. who weren't club, who weren't like like near us, right? And so I joined Instagram and I took my iPhone, I think iPhone seven at the time, and just mm. started started to take you know images of the food that I baked and I made and. You know, I look back and those, the, those images, of course, are awful. Are, th- are they you still know. there? Yes. <laughs> not not on Instagram. You actually have to go on my Tumblr to find them. Oh, okay, they're okay. They're like back in like 2014, I think. Okay. Um, and so like hidden away. <laughs> hidden away. Um, you know, but, you know, but, but like I think there was the moment of like, oh, there's something here. And I look back at those, you know, those first, first two or three images. I'm like, oh, there's something else here than just food. Interesting. And I could feel, I'm like, oh no, like this may be a long time thing, I think. I think this may be a new passion. Who? Um, yeah. Your, your average person doesn't think about the story that a picture is trying to tell. And mm-hmm. I have a feeling you do. I, yeah, you know. Like early, early, like you had that, right? Mm-hmm. Like there's images that I loved, an artist who I loved, who they made, they made me feel something. Yeah. And actually, too, so so like around that same the same the same the same point, like June of twenty fourteen. Uh, so there was an Ansel at the Adams ex- exhibit at some art art a museum in Indy. Mm. And before before beforehand, I, hand, I was like, I don't know who this guy is, and like his work, I had no idea. And I walk into this you know, this gallery of all like 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 all like all his images and. The, the emotions that I felt like mm. seeing those images and how impactful they were. I was like, I, w- I want to make art like that. Okay. The art that makes you feel something because like the way that he's able to take black, white, and gray and make nature and yeah. rocks strip and strip like, away all the colors. How, how he's able to do that in that time with, with his gear is mind blowing. And just like his work has always inspired me. Like he's so amazing. And like that was, I think, the first, the first, the first like intro into this photo world of like, yeah. here are images that that like some like some some guy took that now are changing my life, and I'm feeling something now all these years later. You know. So then, how did you keep flexing that? composition muscle like what did you Mm -hmm. because a lot of your pictures seem like they're in motion Mm -hmm. it's dynamic right it's it's uh like what what did you start technically thinking about angles lighting top down Mm -hmm. you know what break it down that way yeah you know so i really love love the overhead style Mm. you know seeing a full scene a full spread so that's really really where i began and i love this idea of like seeing a table, seeing bowls and plates and like things messy and like movement, you know, because food as it sits is it, so much more than just like here is a plate of this, mm-hmm. right? With food, like it's very communal. It's very much about history and about family and about, you know, sharing love and like there's more em- emotion behind food than just here is a plate. It's amazing. And so I know when I try and make... M- my, my own work I will, will want it to feel that way of like there it feels there's life in this dish it's not mm. just a f- like 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 it's not just food mm. so then after you start building these skills did you have any idea what you would be doing whether it's your own agency or mm-hmm. a lot of a lot of instagram food influencers are kind of doing their own thing mm-hmm. right and so did you have any idea of where you wanted to take this um i think ideally i think 
ideally I wanted to go full time at some point. Because um, at that time, was Instagram still what was that twenty fourteen? Twenty fourteen, like really early stages, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. not a lot of influencers like then. Not really then. No, the influencer I think term really began like when I when I was in like later college. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. So Be- what? Yeah. What there was to to not have anyone. As an example, is right. Like, what did you think you'd be doing with food and photos? Honestly, like at that point, I didn't know. I yeah. was just like oh, really okay. enjoying the just process. Kept going. Okay. Yeah, because like you know, it's a tough career to tell your parents of like, hey, I want to do this, and they're like, what is that? Like, how like do you do you make an income off mm-hmm. of that? Right? You know. And so when you're that young, you're like, I want to do everything, and then it's like, well there's still taxes to pay and like, you know, there's still like rent to pay. You can't just do anything you want. Right. right <laughs> you know? And right, so, right. um, you know, I think at that, that, at that point I was still in college and like, I wanted to do hospitality, do that for some time and then like see where things went. And so after school, um, I got my, you know, quote unquote dream job, like being an advertising with you got the, it. Uh, and you know i moved up here for that role and like like uprooted my whole my whole life and like to start to start this and like i enjoyed aspects of the job and like Mm. the team at that job but like like i sort of learned very fast that like oh this may not be long term for me and like just just like career wise you know and so i think it was back then when i was like okay i think i need to do other things what aspects of it was it too corporate what what was it it's very corporate very corporate very corporate Yes. Corporate in the sense of what you you just feel like a, a cog in the machine, like where you feel lost and like your decisions don't have weight to it. Like what what mm-hmm. do you mean by corporate? I felt like we were more of like folk, like we were more of designers who made flyers and like actually did anything impactful oh. or made any real change or did anything like here's what w- w- what I did. You know, the only time I really felt like I did anything of worth was when I was asked to go on site and take and take images you know Mm. make images for these flyers for these posters they're they're able to use these images to make a profit like that to me is some value right and so like i really enjoyed that and i sort of knew that like they were underpaying me for sure Mm. and so i knew like you know and so i was like okay well if i was like like on my own i could make so much more and like be happy (laughs) you know so then, you had something that was paying the bills. Were you cultivating that side passion? Oh, there mm-hmm. you go. Mm-hmm. There you go. So then, what what were you doing when you weren't at the day job to cultivate? What were you actually mm-hmm. doing? Yeah. So honestly, it got to a point where like both 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 worlds of like photos and my actual job were both a full time career. Oh, okay. Um, so, so I would come home, eat, rest a bit, and then work until probably like. 12 every night you know like like answering emails responding to things These, you're, you know? you're taking you're taking food photos for brands by now already yes mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah so it was at a point <laughs> point where i was like okay well long term this is not possible i can't work 100 hours a week and expect to be happy you know what i mean most it's wait how many years were you taking fo- photos of food before you got your your tipping point so so i started at N- 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 19. nineteen. Okay. From from nineteen to like twenty two ish. Three years. Okay. Um, twenty three ish. I was um, doing doing this ideal, you know, small smaller brand gigs. So let's ha- let's ha- focus ha- on that window. Yeah. How many reps or or iterations did you put in before a brand actually reached out? Or before you uh, na- mm-hmm. like, you know, came to a deal with the brand. Sure. Yeah. So, so I've always been like very interested in the selling process and like the sales pitch of this industry, and so I started my company when I was nineteen. Six months later, like I landed my f- f- first brand deal. How did that come to be? Uh, you, you know what? <laughs> you know when I started out, like like so much of it was just cold emailing, literally just like, okay. and and. and and at that time, time it was like paragraphs of things of like, "Hi, I'm Nate. Here is my work. I love your your, your brand. I want to do this as a career. Like all the stuff. I shared everything. Were you willing to do it for free at that time? Um, no, but very like very cheaply. Oh, okay, right? okay, okay. I don't think I've ever really worked 
for any large brand or any brand for free. Rarely wow. ever. Okay. Because uh, I'm like, regardless of my talents, regardless of your time, you you still have a talent. You know, yeah. regardless of years that like, you've been in this industry, your time your time is still a value. Good for you. Wherever you, know? you got that confidence. Yeah. <laughs> Good for you. <laughs> and also, I help to some. You know, at the same time, uh, all my p- p- parents have owned their own company for uh, yeah, for yeah. for 19 years now. You know, okay. and so you know, uh, my dad, my dad launched it when I, when when I was nine mm. and so I watched them through like the good and the bad like in the hard learn how to start an entity from nothing to where it is today you know and so those sort of like skill sets and like knowledge helped me yeah. um, and so sort of knowing, knowing, knowing that like brands won't approach you you have to like email them so especially when you're starting out new like no one knows you you know and so I was just young and had an email account. I was like, I'm going to email these folks. Why not? And so, you know, m- many folks were like, no, we're fine. Or like, just no response. And that's normal nowadays. My goodness. How did you handle that? Were you okay with getting no's at back in the day? Um, it's hard to remember. I, I don't think it was as hard because the payout was really like not great. So it's like, I didn't lose a lot, you uh. know? It's tough nowadays when you more and to you. Lose, yeah. So I, you know, you know, you know, when you're writing a bid, bid for like fifty k, and that drops, and you're like, oh my money is just gone. I was like, no, <laughs> that is that's really hard. And in well, this actually this last uh last few months actually, I think in like March, um, like I lost like f- like six bids bids in the same week, Oof. and it. And then total, 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 they, they rounded up to like 40 K. I was like, okay. Cuts from the pandemic. No, I mean, just like things, you know, they went with other folks. They weren't interested. It was overpriced. You you know, there's a, there's a variety of reasons of why folks, folks don't, don't, don't sign. You shared on a previous episode where it's like, it even hurts more when it's, especially from a brand that you've previously worked with. Mm Mm-hmm. That sucks. Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh, when I started, so so Jan one of this last year, um, there there was a brand who we were plan planning on like a twelve month contract. Wow. I was like, yes, I can, like a little stability. N- no, right, and like to help, like bring on a, you know an editor, oh. yeah, but like other folks to help me, and they they didn't cut ties. They 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 reallocated funds elsewhere and so they were like okay we're fine now so i'm like okay like that that was hard and so i think now it's harder when when it's like like oh this brand i really love and we had a chance to work to and now it's just gone and so you know but i think like i've also learned within this industry that things come and go and Mm brand the brand the brands i shot a shot a shot a shot for in year one two and three they are not the brands I shoot f- for now, you know? And so, wow. and I think it's because, you know, within this industry and me have the experience on the other side, me- many folks leave, you know, and they leave and folks like, it's not folks necessarily are, the brand, pl- it's place the people them. making those decisions. Yeah. You know? And right? so, so I mean like you sort of, if I've learned anything, it's about the contacts, you mm. know, not, not always the brand because like I've had con- contacts who have left brands who have pulled me, me, me into, into different other jobs. Mm-hmm. Right. So it's less about the brand and more about who is there, there as a contact. And so if you, you're able to, you know, build up a relationship with those folks, it's like, it's nice and you're able to call upon them. So who should, who should people be looking for? Like, like marketing agencies? It depends. Um, so when you say that, you're asking more of like if you're trying trying to email a brand, mm. who is the one to ask, right? Are you asking that? Yeah, I guess it depends. It also depends on how large that brand is. Correct. If it's in-house, if it's outsourced, all that stuff. Because like because because like the larger the brand, I would say, the more like like likely there, there's an in-house person like or like people, yeah. Yeah. and then and then like an ad agency who they work with. And so, like, if there's, like, an influencer one, like, like, so, like, so, like, if they're very big, they'll have, like, like, agencies for uh, their, like, their video work, their photo work, their social, their influencer. They'll have, like, these little, like, just, like, offshoots where, like, 
or the in-house folks oversee that process. Mm. Um, so when folks ask me who am I emailing, it's like it's you kind of have to research the brand and research like who works there, yeah. who, who is the contact, the you know, truly, you know, and so, 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 and so it's a lot of like LinkedIn stalking and like seeing mm. who works there, who has left, you know, and also too, if there, if there, if there's a brand who I'm interested in and in, in, in like the last year, the contact or that, that role has like changed hands three or four times. I'm like, they may not be the best brand to work with, right? Because if folks are coming and then leaving, Off it's like, hmm, interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, so, so, so it's a lot of research, I would say, on that end, for sure. So these days, I mean, is it still a lot of cold emails? Because I feel like you have, you've built a reputation, mm -hmm. right? Portfolio, so polished. Thank you. And what is it these days? Is it, is it still, like, what's the breakdown or the ratio of inquiries? Is it you reaching mm -hmm. out? Is it them reaching out? What is it these days? I would say nowadays it's probably like 75% folks find me nice. and 25 it's still like the you, you still cool have self. you still have dream brands you want to work with? Absolutely. <laughs> yes. Good for you. And there's very few brands um very few I would say who I who I've told told folks I'm like if they were to call me today and say hey we want you to be our you know like 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 our in-house person yeah. but we're out of like the east coast the west coast i would consider <laughs> moving out there um because like there's some brands i'm just like i love but you know but like 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 i love more being self like self owned and employed right yeah so that's a tough sell for sure but there's a few interesting um if you were to give anyone advice let's say someone who just an average person going out to dinner trying to take food pictures of their food Mm -hmm. What advice, if you were to prioritize things like angles and lighting and composition, mm -hmm. you know, not just the food, but would you have a hand model in there, just activity to have it dynamic? Like, how would you, what, what advice would you give to people to create mm -hmm. a more compelling story through that sure. photo? Yeah, you know, I think a lot of folks think it's just like a point and shoot of like, oh, here's the plate, here's, a, here's the lens, and that's it. And photos, at least Photo, 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 photos that tell a story that that sell an idea and sell a vibe um there's much more involved with that and so i think in order to really like understand and like take a good a good image you have to sort of step back back and think what is the narrative i'm trying to tell with this like mm -hmm. what is the feeling i want i want the viewer to feel like is it excitement is it joy like like is it drama like is it hunger like obviously a course core a course in food it's supposed to be that but it's more than that right because <laughs> hunger is just one one emotion right and so um so i always think through through like what sort of narrative am i trying to tell and then how does adding elements change that mm. or hurt that right so so like a hand frame does that really tell a story story well or not you know like like if there if there's a sauce involved mm. you know a hand holding a spoon and like you know the pour is actually very very compelling right um but if it's something where like the dish on its own is complete and it's pretty enough then maybe it's like the hand the hands in frame or like you know like other elements are too much and it's just here is the hero of the dish yeah mm -hmm. so it really depends out of all the shots um do you do mo ma mainly top down, or is is it like just bad all around to just go from a side? It depends on the space, you know, and also the lighting. You know, yeah. reg reg regardless of gear, no image can be saved saved by poor lighting. Mm. You know, and so lighting is everything. And so I always tell folks like you can take a beautiful, beautiful image on like your iPhone, and you need good good you know lighting because like in order yeah. to like because like you know like like you know the orange like overhead glow of lighting is like like not nice at all right so, well and then if you don't bring your own lighting then this is going to cast a shadow on the tabletop right and mm -hmm. people bring in their own loom cubes and like light. yes <laughs> wild to me i was like who's doing this these influencers are getting wild but you know it it makes sense if that's your sort of like income stream is 
going to places and knowing that like most of them have horrible ambient lighting it's like you need to bring some something that's small that's like not this huge you know this huge light box but is bright enough to like make the food look somewhat appetizing for yeah. sure mm -hmm. yeah. where did you learn or is it just mainly intuition over time like color theory Mm. And, or are you are you intentional with with your color palettes? Yes. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. For and sure. For sure. Especially in food. Is the base sure. from the food, or is it from the objects in the food, like around the food, or what mm -hmm. is it from? It depends. Mm. Um, so I typically will go off of the hero. So like, like if it's a cake, if it's a steak, what that's have the hero you. hero shot. Yes. Correct. Okay. Gotcha. And so like if we're styling a scene, we have like a blank slate, right? And we're bringing in, let's say, a cake or a steak, right? That is our hero. From there, you know, I'm pulling out, okay, well, well, like, if it's a white cake, you know, the, the buttercream's white, maybe there there's flowers on it, maybe maybe some fruit, what have you. So there's, you know, you know, there's reds, some blues, greens, what have you, right? And so from there, we're able to sort of pull out other elements. I'm like, okay, well, I want to bring in, let's say, let's say, let's say, like, pastels, or I want to bring in gold or blacks or what have you and so do you, do you cap it constrain yourself to maybe three colors or what do you what do you do i, I, guess, I guess it depends on sort of what the narrative is oh, like okay. what sort of the vibe is if we're shooting let's say like a cake again and it's like a springtime scene and so i want it to be like you know we're in the garden and sure. it's like this beautiful you know greens of the garden and like the flowers and uh the b b b berries and all these things you know and so i'm gonna maybe pick elements that speak to that sort of color tones and like maybe 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 not choose like a lime green that, that that's like very off you know from what we're from like the color narrative right yeah and, and so it's tough to really say like how i sort of approach it i think understanding how colors work and like other pairs and opposites helps for sure um but there's other times where it's just like you kind of just have to guess and feel it and like trial and actual error like mm. and see what pairs up with you know and shooting enough you sort of learn what pairs up well and what does not you know and so for me it's just like you you sort of just like learn over time mm -hmm. and just experiment the main takeaway guys and you you preach this on your uh fee as well is uh to not let the lack of gear be an excuse for not sh for shooting, mm -hmm. not shooting, right? So mm -hmm. just there's so much more to a compelling photo mm -hmm. than the camera you used. And yes. these are these phones are crazy good these yeah. days. And as long as you have an eye or for aesthetics and a basic understanding of composition mm -hmm. and color design and all that stuff, I think you'll make a very com especially on if it's just for Instagram, like oh for sure. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and so. If you and you probably have, but do you what kind of clients do you lean towards? Is it shooting food for for restaurants, for mm -hmm. hospitality, for editorials, or for actual? Because I feel like it's just food, like like other companies that you're working, other clients. You're not really like in the restaurant, mm -hmm. like shooting in the restaurant. You, you're sure. in your studio. Mm -hmm. So how did you navigate? Like, end up here? Yeah, you know. I <laughs> the, I wanted to make enough where I was able to go full time like as fast as I could, you know. And so um, knowing that like a lot of the time, even though I really enjoy the, the, the re restaurant side, okay, uh, be, being able to like to like collab with a chef and a team and like yeah. like seeing like seeing a seeing a chef's teams like eyes like like you know light up when then. When, when everything's styled right and like like within the nice lighting they're yeah. just like wow our food looks amazing like that's so like, like that's really fun it's especially when the team makes really pretty food yeah. it's tough when it's not and you're like oh <laughs> we gotta do something I, here you know but it's very easy when like the food is beautiful right 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 but the payout isn't always the best interesting okay. and so even though i enjoy that aspect i don't do a lot of it because the payout's like not amazing and so you have to do more of those shoots in order to make a good income what about working for editorials like timeout mm -hmm. which is kind of like you you work for the the editorial and then you still get your foot in the door in the mm -hmm. restaurants i wonder if you get paid even less 
can, see kind that of editorial down, space is a whole other space that is I don't know oh. anything about. Oh. Um, it's very tough to break into, and so like with like Chicago Times, uh, Time Out, they're not. I hate to say the word gatekeep because it's not. It's just more of less turnover. Like editorial is the agents and folks find finding their teams who they like and then they work with them forever mm. and it's very tough to like break in and so especially where i'm at where it's like sometimes it's like like sometimes at times within those bases they like to underpay people and it's like okay you know so it's not it's not great it's so kind of like now that you're your own thing you have full control true and so, I, so I feel like more of the editorial side is like, let's say, let's say I shoot for a place, uh, I shoot, I shoot for a brand, and they use th- those images in like a piece. Mm. You know, that's really where I'll be like, oh, you know, here is my image, and here is the you name. You can license it. images. Yeah, correct, right, mm-hmm, right, for sure. Right. And so, so you I, can very much still be in that industry if you if they reached out. Yeah, for sure. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, because when I see your portfolio, I still get the editorial vibe. I, Thank you. I Aww. get the, the high contrast, the punchiness. Mm-hmm. The sometimes it's like you. I can see you shooting in like noon, like just this harsh light, mm-hmm. and uh, yeah, that's why I thought of editorial. Yeah. But also, you you like shoot your your a lifestyle photographer. So mm-hmm. like, when you're in these hospitality spaces, you get kind of both. You get food and the story behind the chef that made the food. Right. Mm-hmm. Have you worked with with chefs that you kind of like once you, not once but like looked up to and that now you get to like see them face to face like this is this is our foot in the door to meet the people that I've always I mean I'm just speaking from personal experience mm-hmm. like people that I've admired and and looked up to and I obviously enjoy their food but now I have an excuse mm-hmm. to have a conversation with them right because they like my photos like mm-hmm. have you had have you had an experience like that you know um not within the chef industry, no. Uh, but, but but there are places where like I've done work for them, and their chef teams are like very cool, or like their concepts are really fun. Mm. And, then, and so it's more more like I admire your your approach to food and like how you approach a dish and like why why you're a chef. I don't know. Um, I like to work with chefs who appreciate appreciate food and their people. It's yes. really easy to find a chef who just is just like a jerk and not very nice and just like I hear them. I hear about these things. I just I haven't seen it. It's it's an issue for sure. Yeah. Um, so especially within like the ho- the hospitality spaces, um, many chefs should be in therapy, but instead they have they have like a knife. <laughs> you know what I mean? So <laughs> you know, and so there. It's like even though I think not all chefs, of course, um, but there. There is that sort of like hierarchical, sexist, almost at times abuse that can occur occur within within those environments. For I sure, hear, I hear discussions around that, and mm-hmm. I, I think people. It's a new generation, and I think I think, so. I think mm-hmm. uh, it's slowly shifting. Um, less pots and pans being thrown, less berating, mm-hmm. less sexism. All mm-hmm. that stuff. I think so. I hope so, anyways, because I think the industry can be so fun and so fantastic, and I know it is. You know. But when like you make an unsafe industry, folks won't, folk, folks, folks, are hesitant to stay in one and then two join it. It's interesting because you give yourself into an industry that you love, you know, whether it's making food or service and hospitality, mm-hmm. and you give back to all the guests that come through your doors. But you're not met with that within your own team sometimes. Mm-hmm. Um. So I guess slightly uh, transitioning back to clients, if a client or a potential client were to reach out, how do you navigate the the introduction and the inquiry? Because interest is not the same as actually putting a safety deposit down, right? Mm-hmm. So like, how do you funnel them into that? And, you know, only if it's a good fit. If it's not a good fit, you know, mm-hmm. happy to part ways. But sure. um, there's a right way and like there's a graceful way to go about it. And then there's kind of like a jarring way to go about it i'm sure sure yeah you know i think for for every sort of like email inquiry interest um you kind of can gauge and like read 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 like in between the lines of like where is this headed Mm. like 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 you know so i have a 
con- a con- a contact form on my site that walks through like you know their name their info their b- b- budget their shoot type and like sh- just like to share with me like 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 your sort of needs right and i can kind of tell when a person or an entity they're more of like a mass email type deal where they're they're tasked to find a bunch of folks and get just like quotes and that's it Mm. and with those folks i'm able to to just like send like send like send them a rate card send them some vague pricing and then they're typically always gone Mm. Uh, and those i don't spend a lot of time on because i sort of know that they're not qualified leads right and i'm most interested in dealing with those leads who who i deem will actually book right yeah and so if like like i can also tell too like if they start their text with like just hi or hi sir <laughs> and not like nate right <laughs> because 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 then i can sort of know that like they don't really care about my brand or really care about our work it's just more of like they're trying to find it's very generic yeah they're trying to th- they're trying to find a body in the room hmm. and i'm and we as artists are not just bodies so we're you know like we are people and you know and so i try and sift out those folks and like not not spend a lot a lot, a lot a long time on those leads and like trying to call with them and like waste waste like honestly our time if it's just like they won't they probably won't won't sign anyways Hmm. and if they do sign they'll typically be horrible because they don't value you as an artist you Mm -hmm, know mm -hmm. um so so i think like a qualified lead is anybody who they're like hi nate we love you uh, your work we were we were we were like referred to you by a by a friend a colleague what have you Uh, like those leads are more like okay there's an interest and they know like of me even if they don't know our work they know of me, mm. you know, and there's something else there. There's there's some interest. Like they have done the time to be on our site, view our work, and like get, get interest, right? And so those leads all have calls with and like, you know, yeah. Meet what are, with what them. are the follow up questions after you've identified a qualified lead? Yeah, you know, just asking them more of like you know the number of images. Like, what are the goals here? Where will these images live? Like, is this like is this more of like evergreen content? Is this for a campaign? Is this for a new product launch? It could be for anything, right? And so, trying to understand like where their sort of heads base is. By identifying that, you mm-hmm. get a better idea of their budget, even though they've maybe even if they just disclosed that already. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, so like, 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 so on those calls too, I'm able to even weed out even more because, like, if they come to me with like no information, if it's like we don't really know, it's just kind of vague. We just like those folks that that they know they need images, but they don't know beyond that point it's Mm. like okay well i'm gonna waste my my time here with this because obviously you don't know what you you want and with those brands i found out the hard way that they know what they don't like interesting and so we'll get we'll get through the entire process and then at the editing phase they have issues galore and i'm sure you have it in your contract now how many how many re-edits you got yes (laughs) and who's able to ask for edits, oh, I've had actually had an issue. people asking. So I've had an issue this last month, actually. Oh. So some tea. Oh, no. um, what happened was, so we got through the entire process, and the, and the brand was fantastic to work with. So fun. So it was an ad agency. So it was a gal who is, like, I guess, like, their ad agency person. Um, but she's, like, a smaller entity, right? And so her plus, like, the brand. So, um Within the client, there were like three contacts, and they were all ladies, right? S- really smart, fantastic to what we'll work with, like chill vibes throughout, helpful, sent, sent over info, was on the calls, provided provided feedback, and was great. And we got to the like towards editing, and I started to edit the images, and I sent them the images, and I get an email from some random ops manager. Yeah, that's tough. That's tough. Good mm-hmm. for you for gracefully navigating that. <laughs> you no, know, but for for like you know you know those challenging brands, there's ten, twelve who are fantastic. Sure. My goodness. Um, sure, sure. So on so in that same month, hilariously enough, there was a brand I shot a shot a shot a shot for, and 
these two gals. Um, one was, I think, like an art director. The other was a social manager. So, like, when I tell you that they came so, 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 like, prepared, mm. they had, they had like, uh, the campaign deck, example images, a shot list before, before they, they had even signed anything. I was like, oh, wow. <gasps> <laughs> and like the whole process with them from like start to end was just fabulous. And like, so while there are challenging contacts and brands to deal with and to work with, sure. there's also like, there's so many more who are fantastic to work with. I guess. So from a different perspective, what should brands kind of be thinking about prior to reaching out to a photographer? Mm-hmm. One thing I kind of notice a lot now at, and I don't know if it's just me or the industry as a whole. So if anyone knows, please answer. Cause I am just, you know, um, it's asking for raw files a lot and the brands wanting those raw assets. And I sort of, how I sort of frame that is one, they don't serve you in the way that you think they will. They're unedited images. Like many times you have to edit the images or like layer stack or something in order to make these right. So having these won't serve you. And, and I know, know from my own experience and being on the other side, those, those, those raw images will sit on some folder in some server and not, not be used, used because, because, because they're unedited files. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and no one with, like, no one's going to use that or take the time to edit those files down. Um, and so it's just sort of explaining that, like, you know, you are also, too, you're also paying me as a pro to be here to shoot everything, edit everything. You're paying for my editing style. Like, you, you're you you're paying for the whole process and not just the one piece. Mm-hmm. Like, like, and so, like, if your goal is to just hire a body in the room, like, I would tell you to hire an intern. No, like, 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 don't waste a pro's time with work that like an intern who who is out of school can do. Yeah. Uh, Cause what you're trying to get is pro tier like, at a cheap rate. And it's mm-hmm. like, you can't have that, you know? So I always say like in the hotel industry, you want the well, Waldorf Astoria experience, like at like the motel six pricing. Mm. And even though that's a noble effort, that's not always possible. Right. Because, yeah. because so, so, so much of what makes pros of value is that we have done enough shoots and we've, done it's enough the of these and yeah. you're, you're paying for our expertise in the room and so you're leaning on us for that and so if you sort of strip that away away and say well the, i want the raw images mm. you sort of strip us of any sort of like professionalism it's like you know you are paying for li- like all this not just a piece of the puzzle you know what i mean like i'll i'll do a re-edit you don't like what how a photo looks like i'll definitely mm-hmm. touch retouch it and stuff oh of course i always tell folks too it's like you know raw images i mean i sell mine for like five hundred dollars a per raw file Ooh. because because the raw images the rights to those those are all we have left that's all we have in terms yeah. of an artist right within this space and so it's so if you give up the raw images i can't use those raws ever i can't use it to like promote on social i can't use it to do anything you own the rights you know and so within like like our work we still want to hold those those right those those rights and then license the images out mm. you know and so you know, and so I always tell folk, folk, folks, I'm like, the raw images, honestly, if you're going to use it forever on a billboard, that's when I would say buy one of them. You know, that's when, that's pretty, not normal, but like, that's an easier, you know, thing. But like, why, why, why would they want a raw over an edited photo? Because, 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 because like they Are hold they gonna the rights. Are they going to change the lighting or what? Well, that's the thing, right? They're able to In sort. In your contract, is it a limited license? Hmm? Oh, that's why. I, I guess in the wedding thing, it's like I don't have a I don't have an expiration date. Sure, interesting. Be- because like you know, being on the other side, I know that most images. I would say like ninety percent of all images, like are not evergreen. M- meaning that they're that like at some point they're going to expire. Sure. Like the logos will change, the pro on the branding will change. There's so many things like within the space that change. And they'll need new images. So you're buying raw files of images that, like, in three yeah. years may change. Have you ever caught a client using 
it photos past its expiration date? So typically, so I feel like with lights, within that sort of world of like two licensed images and those costs, I am pretty lax. I think when it comes to the brands that I that I shoot for, because I think within nowadays, with the online space, it's really tough to justify, because because like like like, like I won't charge Mary Sue over here, who who has like a small company, who she's only post, posting on social media. Mm-hmm. That kind of licensing is like, like, like here's a standard thing for you that you're able to use for, you know, you know online or on social and on print. That's fine. And like the value that I get paid up, it's fine. Um, the only time I would say there's any sort of like discussion is if it's like a billboard or if it's like you're shooting for, let's say, like, bon- like, like, like a bon appetit type mm. you know, entity where those are being seen by millions of thousands thousands of eyes you know what i mean like that's sort of where those light lines begin begin to be drawn but like for most folks like i rather they have them book again than being but then be like caught up within like mm. the the licensing and trying to explain that yeah. because like 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 i've tried to charge it before and i've lost more bids try, trying to explain that the, 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 just it saying, falls like, back to the relationship, right? Yes, exactly. And so I think, like, mm. right now, there's so many more artists in this space. There's so much more competition within this space that uh, to license you, you probably should. And maybe there's folks who 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 are out there saying like that, like, oh, you should, and here's the cost. But right now, the, there isn't a real like solid guide guideline of what what to charge and what and how, and like it's very arbitrary. And so, yeah. For me, it's like I don't really care enough. I mean, like, it's fine. So it's worked, and then, like no one's been angry about it. So, um, along the same lines of value proposition, you dropped a number fifty k in twelve months, right? Mm-hmm. Um, how does one arrive at a number like that? So, like, mm-hmm. it's just when you start this next segment, it's going to open the eyes for a lot of people. I think of just yeah. like what's possible. Yeah. Right. So, like, as you level up with your with your expertise, your quality, and your portfolio, how does one navigate increasing their quotes? Mm-hmm. So, so it's tough, and it's because I think the industry gate keeps a lot of pricing. Mm. It's very much like, oh, you you don't share pricing, no, no, no. But the issue with this is that, like, if we don't at least have like a ballpark number to go off of, or like some sort of like industry guidelines of like, if you are here you know, quality of image wise, you should charge this because it helps one, the artist to understand like, here's my value right now. And here's where, where, where I would like to be. Yeah. Two, it helps the, it helps brands large and small understand here's what to expect Mm. pricing wise is if I want to hire in, you know, you know, the top tier pro, like I may pay other day rate, maybe five, five or seven K, you know, like in LA, like those those rates are like seven eight k, for like the, you know the pro tiers, um, and you just ha- you sort of have to. Was that trial and error to get to that number? And there are some helpful things online, like some articles, but a lot of it honestly is just like, like seeing what folks book and work, you know, and like seeing and like and like, and like asking folks around and being open about you know, your pricing and how you price yeah. out, uh, because, 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 because everybody wins, you know, and there's, so, there, there, there's folks who think like, Oh, like if you tell them your pricing, then they'll undercut you. I'm like, they could anyways, I guess, you know what I mean? It's like, if that's like, like, like in my mind, if that was the, the only thing that took me away from some, some, some one else's bid, then I wasn't meant for that bid. You know what I mean? Like they mm. wouldn't have booked me anyways, you know? If pricing was was like the only gain, yeah, you know, I don't know. I just like don't if if someone really wanted to work with you, th- most of the times they'll they'll pay your quote. Yes, correct. Mm-hmm. Now, but like, how does when when you start going into like on a retainer kind of thing, like mm-hmm. it becomes a little more ambiguous. Like, how do you navigate those type of deals? Yeah, you know, retainers are especially in our industry are tough because every project has like its own sort of needs and wants 
like if you do a brand where they want the same images, the same the same amount of assets every month, like it's a little easier to plan out like like okay, for every month you'll pay this amount, right? Um, but there's others where their their needs change every quarter, or every month, mm. and so you kind of have to. For me, it's kind of tough to do a retainer because like, even though those funds are awesome to have, um, you may have to change change them. You know what I mean? So there's ways. I think there's way. You know, like depending on the brand and your relationship, it's probably easier to like you know change change out quote quotes so if they need more and they understand that, right? Yeah. Um, but like you know, in my industry, like retainers are tough to get um, because needs change a lot. So I, I guess like the, the toughest thing going back to that one of the last questions is like is is trying to guesstimate the value you're providing right mm -hmm. I, I once came from the school of thought of well think about how what your hourly rate is mm -hmm. and then factor in time on site time editing <laughs> all that stuff and it is hard to put a number on things like expertise and stuff like mm -hmm. that but like the cost of doing business like licensing if you're doing video the you know licensing oh, yeah. music and mm -hmm. software and all the gear that we have right so that's one way to look at it mm -hmm. but even after you add up all the gear and your expertise and the software and the licensing you're probably still undervaluing the amount of value you're providing to the clients that you're probably working with mm -hmm. so how does one guess how much value you're providing to that client oh man that depends i think it depends on i guess what you sort of feel like is your value it and what makes you unique to to any other artists out there well, i guess how much money they're making off of your photos right it's like what what mm -hmm. is the value what is the value they're getting from this it's tough to gauge. There are softwares out there and like programs you're, 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 you're able to get like a rough estimate of like what to charge. Those aren't always the most accurate. So, so, so I don't like to use them. Um, you know, like a lot of it is okay. Like here's what, what I need to make a month, a month in right. order to pay rent, to pay off everything and make a profit, you know? And so from there you say, okay, well, here's my, here, here are the quality of images I have here here's the style style of work I'm able to make here's where I should probably be at price wise right is it okay to ask for what their budget is it is right oh sure I always do it is it's not a turn off when you ask if it is that's a red flag because that's because how else am I supposed to quote you if I don't know like what you want to you know but if they say oh we don't know yet that's a red flag at times because it's because it means means that they haven't thought things through and they're just trying to get a pricing range. Mm. So, you know, there's things you kind of have to think through and like watch out for, I suppose. Sure. Right. Mm -hmm. sure. Well, now that you're in a new place, you have a much dedicated, like larger and dedicated studio. Mm -hmm. Is there anything that's going to change for business now? Or what, what are you looking for in the next at least year? Yeah, you know, like I would love, 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 love to shoot a cookbook. I remember you saying um, that. That's yeah. been a dream of mine for like the few years now. Like your own cookbook, or with the, where you're partnering with someone? Uh, probably a partnership where I would shoot the images, and it would be like their book. Like a chef, or like truly a, anybody. It could be because like like, what's that taste taste made? Like there's like, like oh yeah, chefs that came out from YouTube. You know, it's just yeah, yeah, like yeah. home chefs, mm -hmm. right? So. Is there anyone in mind? Do you want to you want to manifest right now? What, like uh, who would be really cool to work with? Um, you know who who would be amazing, it, and he's in Detroit. Uh, Chef John on TikTok. Okay, I haven't. I'm not. I, I'm oh. on TikTok. I don't watch it often. So. Oh, <laughs> what a what a he's he's so talented and so funny. Okay. Like in his approach to food. Oh my partner and I just love him okay. and like he he's he's queer and like his sort of approach to food is from like the queer lens and he's just like funny and his food looks amazing and so like 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 like, like, like I would dr drive out like out there and shoot his book if he had a book so yeah. that'd be amazing um honestly like what, what what kind of time commitment would that look like though at least a year in terms of what? In terms of like, Ooh. oh, I guess shooting. You can just bang out a bunch of shots pretty mm -hmm. fast. Oh yeah, so like write, writing a book could take years, right? But doing a shoot, you know, it, it depends on how many it the items we're sh you know we're trying yeah. we're trying to shoot, ha ha how long the items take, um, you know, like I would say like food wise, regardless of cookbook or not, like 
like like our goal is to make the food a food on set and then shoot it like like the most that we're able to really do is between six and eight yeah like eight is a lot um but like six seven is kind of where like the nice spot is and so like if we're shooting a book with like 35 items that could take six days full days to shoot not bad you know for sure right (laughs) and like you know payout wise that's fantastic so do you do you print your photos i have Mm -hmm. you have is it in your home it is so i just ordered new prints actually that that, 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 this week so would you encourage everyone to print their photos um i think you should i think it's fun to look to look at your work like 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 in the wild and see those images and be like oh wow like that was some something that i made and now it's here in my home any any interest in kind of hosting a gallery one day <sighs> maybe i don't know or are there any projects you do for yourself right like mm-hmm. o- outside of the brands yeah you know like like i think from from a gallery maybe i think i want to do do like a themed set like set of images that like have a narrative in mind or like a call to action in mind do you follow david saw on tiktok yes yeah he's fa- fantastic well, David, so i took <laughs> yeah. his class recently the posing class oh really and uh oh. he did a, he did a lips gallery for valentine's day <gasps> that's so, fun yeah so I he's mean, if, very cool if there's a gallery there's got to be a theme and he nailed it i love that that's so fun <laughs> yeah you know so, so so i think i think like like i would love love to do that at some point okay uh, but that's more of like i think like the fine art side of of uh, the food industry um i think for just that just like like my own projects and stuff 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 you know my, my partner cook cook cooks and loves to cook and okay. so we bond over like over like over for food and like sharing food and like being being able to make a may make food and make it make a dish that looks pretty that's like nice to shoot and yeah. so um those are moments where like it's not branded work or like paid work it's just like fun thing things See, to I, do the last guest i had on he uh he works at a bike shop and I asked him cause like when oh. I, when I rode my bike to work every day, all year round, I never felt inclined or motivated to ride my bike for fun anymore. So the oh, fact that you, interesting, and your partner still find joy yeah. out of doing that just for the sake of yourselves and mm-hmm. you know, it doesn't have to go on social media, it's just for yourselves. Oh sure. Um, that's nice. Yeah. You know, like, so like, like, like I've always said that I, but I enjoy the photo process. I love like 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 you know planning and shooting and like being be, and being able to make that art. I love to bake. Like that's really where like my home base is of like. What do you like baking? Oh, oh um, truly anything. Your honestly. cookies are fire. Oh, <laughs> truly though, right? <laughs> you know, like truly anything. I love dessert. Okay. I love being being able to eat dessert and like smell dessert and see dessert online like like just truly anything breads cakes uh pies tarts crumble like any any fruit crumble with vanilla ice vanilla bean ice so good right (laughs) it's so easy but so delicious right so i think those kind of elements i really enjoy um so that's where i really go i mean there's moments there's items that like i've baked and cooked before that they don't ever see like even stories i just cook it because because like i need to i need to like do this and just like be here when when you and your partner do you guys go out to dinner oh yes or do you okay do, do you do more one or more of the last do you, do you stay in or do you go out more often uh when we're eating out we'll we'll <laughs> so we will plan out dates to like places that we will want to try and that's it like that's the date <laughs> you know um so we've gone like have traveled to play to play to places and done like events and things and okay. um yeah so like food for us out and about is really fun for sure do you find yourself taking pictures of the food at the restaurant rarely ever nice right because uh, i like this idea of like being able to be in the moment with the food yeah. And I don't want my partner to ever feel like, oh, here, here's Nate. He's doing a photo again. You know what I mean? Like, like even though he loves all of it, like, and is excited about it, like, like there's still mo- mo- moments within my life where, where I don't want it to be online. It's you separate. Know? Yeah. yeah. You know, like these moments are with him and him and him and him alone. Right. And so I don't want it to be like those worlds blend too much. And then, then, and then like it becomes blurry. Right. Mm. All that. Um, Nate, that's pretty much all I got. <gasps> wow, such good question. What'd you think? You thought it was pretty oh good. Oh my right? god, good <laughs> questions. I was like, I did, I did, I did not expect that. That's fabulous. I love that. Uh, any, I guess, any advice for 
for upcoming uh, or aspiring food photographers. And mm-hmm. it's, I mean, when I say f- when, when you're labeled as a food photographer, do you feel like that's constraining? Do you feel like that's what, what that's accurate? Or like, do you, cause you, you, I didn't really get to ask like, how was the wedding? And you, did you shoot for your brother? Like, yeah. So <laughs> right? Is yeah. That, you have a twin. Yeah, I do. <laughs> yes. Oh my God. John. Was that, was that good? Yeah. Was that fun? <sighs> okay. Okay. <laughs> I so I I love my br- 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 brother. I love his his now has now has now fiance. Um, I felt no like like internal joy of like oh. shooting the, the, the those images. Just just and like not like it's exciting, right? You know, be, being able to do to do those images and share it with them. But like there was no sort of like. Like, ooh, I love this. I w- wow. w- 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 want to do more of it, you know? And so, yeah. like, like, when I first began, with, like, I did, you know, events. I did portraits. I did families. I did, did, I did, I did, I did, I did, I did like a right hodgepodge of things, right? <laughs> I think there's a beauty in that because I think you need to learn, like, what you don't like. Yeah. And, and, like, you know, when you, you're asking me, you know, do, 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 do you find, like, the la- la- label like challenging and I personally don't because I like because I found my, my niche of like food is where I thrive I love it you know there is no joy than like shooting a spread of food mm-hmm. you know and and while you know like I've done I'm like engagements for you know you know on my twin John and um, like other friends and other folks like that's pretty much where that that line ends um like, like any friends asking me for for like bridal images like hey would you you do you do this i'm like no i really can't but but i have so many other friends who do who are experts in the room like here is them you know what i mean because like you you sort of learn as you you like niche down you 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 get gear and training that like fits that niche right mm. and so when i go and shoot let's say like you know a session like that it's almost like disarming at you know at some point because it's like i don't know posing i don't really know like bridal posing or how to you know sure. ap- you know uh, approach th- those things it's challenging you know and so it's a whole other skill set that you sort of have to master in a, you know over time so then speaking of like niching down and challenges that come with respective niches are there parts to food photography that aren't uh made public to you know made public so like things like how do you pre- like preservatives right like things to give it a sheen or things mm, th- stuff mm-hmm. like that right like mm-hmm. like i think there was i saw a reel about like how a mcdonald's hamburger is kind of like core like just oh, built yeah. right stuff like that like mm-hmm. is there anything you've learned through your food photography experience yeah you know there's sort of this line between i think like reality and food you know what i mean and as a photographer do you feel responsible for not blurring it too much you know making it aesthetic uh, mm -hmm. but is this what it's going to look like when people buy it that's why so from like an ethics standpoint i personally don't uh because they're hiring to do a job is not me you're not okay okay. lying that's not your decision right you know but i think like what i try and do and like i really push to like use real items like real products that were sh- you know and not like fake things and like um the only you know we we are using tricks and elements to make to make the food look amazing right you know there's there's ways there's ways to like brush on oil or like spritz on some water like to make things pop and look nice and that's food styling like th- that's not a secret or that isn't a bad thing because uh, our goal is to make the food look amazing mm-hmm. The issue is when it's side, you know, and I think I think McDonald's and these like large brands do this at times where they use like fake items and like they kind of like, you know, like it's very obvious that like the stylized product is not the final product that you'll that you'll get like in the drive-through, right? And I think it's because with with food styling, it's very particular. It's very you know, slow movement and like planning things out, and like that's more of like an operational you know mm. like issue and so i think like in my mind it's like it's not really like up to me to be ethical when it comes to like you know but you know to how styled a, you know you know like a sandwich is you yeah. know what i mean mm-hmm. yeah. okay yeah that's fair fair 
Well, Nate, that was definitely it uh, after the last two questions. Love but, it. Uh, <laughs> I love it. Uh, is there, well, I guess, one, anything else you want to share? Anything else? I mean, if, if not, all good? If so? Yeah. No. 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 Um, uh, you asked me like what like advice would you would you give a person who yeah, is like aspiring. yeah you know new in the industry um you know there's there's actually a lot i would want to say because there's so many pieces that like make this important right you know you whenever you start out you 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 feel almost like like isolated it's like oh well i want to be like this but i'm not and like you think that if you buy the right gear and you do buy all these courses and you do all these things that you'll that you'll somehow be better and so much of artistry regardless of photos or not like is just truly practice mm. and not being afraid afraid to make mistakes and take bad photos mm. I, you know, I talk, I talk with the number of students of mine who they get so, so trapped by being able to take great images. It's like, you need to learn how like to take horrible images. You need to learn what does not work in order to understand and know what works really well. Mm. You know, and so I think that's, you know, like it's important to sort of step back and realize that like, like, like everyone was like like a new a new a newbie before you know everyone started out at some point and that's totally fine and and if you have good lighting that's that's half the battle and so i think a lot of folks think this ain't cheap right but you started with daylight oh absolutely everyone does everyone does yeah yeah yeah, because everyone does it's it's free and it's there and you're easy and you're able to learn how lighting works, how angles work, like which angles work well with said, you know, product or with said food item. So just not like not being afraid of the challenges of learning. You know, I think like it can be like, you know, you know, you, 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 you see folks online you're like, like, oh man, I wish I was like this. I wish I could shoot like this person. It's like, we're all on our own sort of journeys and it's easy to fall into those pitfalls, but being able to like, know, understand that we all, we all are like, like own artists. Mm-hmm. And there's times where you're going to learn a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. And then other times where it'd be a little, a little bit slower and mm-hmm. that's normal. And there's no shame in learning and there's no shame in just enjoying that process because I think it's the most exciting time uh, where you're sort of learning what like you, uh, you don't like. Yeah. And through that you learn what you really love. Right. You know, and so with me, I knew very fast that like family p- portraits are not like, can't do them. I just, no, I don't care about, about <laughs> all your kids. I don't, I don't care about them. No, you know, but like, being able to take a sandwich, an item, a plate of pasta, and make it look beautiful, it like makes me so so excited. So I learned that, you know, and there's no shame in the learning process. No, I love it. And there's no timeline. That's uh, really all you have because yeah. even after you win the awards, the awards are fleeting. Right? Also, too, awards are <laughs> they're not always real and they're they're biased. But that's a whole other po- a po- a podcast. Like a, like a popularity sure. contest. It's. Uh, I think fo- folks folks would be surprised of how how much politics play into it. No, yeah, absolutely for sure. And so like like there are folks who win awards who who I'm like get it. They're amazing. And then I mean, there's others. Like you, can you collect your award. What now? Right. right. All you have mm-hmm. is the process. Yeah. So love it. Learn to love it. If you don't mm-hmm. love it, find something you love. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, thanks for tuning in. That was a great episode. Um, you killed it. Keep killing it. Thank in your you. Business. We're going to pay very close attention to how you're doing. And uh, thank you so much. Where can people find you, Nate? Yeah, absolutely. So I'm on on Instagram at Captures by TK Co. And on TikTok at Captures by TK with me and all the all all the other yeah. cool, cool 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 teens on TikTok. Yeah, all the links in the show notes, guys. Yeah. All right, guys. Ciao.